Okay. In this video, I want to address an issue that was brought to my attention by a former student. This particular video that he sent me was from the same group of people that I have been talking about um, for the last few days, right? I've mentioned them in the past, but for the last few days, okay? And people are getting up. Um, it's relatively early in the morning, but you might hear some noise in the background. It's, you know, it happens, but I just like to, uh, you know, say that I'm just going to talk over the noise, unless it just gets to be unbearable. This particular video is one where it has two people who are part of that particular group of people who monopolize, um, and it's okay because you can't stop it. Today in America, we are talking about a prolonged adolescence, and a prolonged adolescence that has grown men getting by, getting using trans skateboards as transportation. We are talking about a prolonged adolescence that psychiatrist because this is what you see me do um, what I actually do is um, um, study in, in the area of social sciences that's basically what I do seven days a week different I, I allocate different time different um, amounts of time to it um, but that's what I do all right I study the social relationships between groups sociology in a social relationship between individuals, social psychology, okay? And it goes more in depth than that, but those are two things that I generally spend my time writing on and spend my time tutoring on and spend my time uh, of studying, right? But you know me, many of you know me as a martial artist. Because of what my specialty is, I go in and out talking about the martial arts, but I also will apply uh, the social sciences to the issue in the martial arts because what's going on in the martial, American martial arts community is actually going on in the United States. So when I say what I'm going to say, you understand that it actually is my field of study and that's why I'm talking about it. Our prolonged adolescence is something that leads, that has grown men spending more time masturbating than they do reading any um, college level material on any a real important subject. Now, if you think that you made a mistake, that I didn't say what I said, according to the psychological profession today, we have a prolonged adolescence, and that prolonged prolonged adolescence has 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 uh, resulted in many things. But one of them is men today, men under the age of thirty, are spending more time masturbating than they do reading any real college level material that would help them be better individuals or better citizens, okay? And it's that group of people that those people who I'm, I'm talking about, they have nothing in common. It's they're some, one, some of the most unethical things they say, right, are lies, and I would tell them to their face. What they're saying is not true. This particular issue has this same group of people, right, the same group of people have a list of the best martial arts for self-defense. The best martial arts for self-defense, they have a list. And amongst other things that they've done, the one thing that irritated me the most was I looked down at the list. And the one martial art that is actually most effective in the street, in real self-defense, they didn't list at all. And that's because most people don't train in it, right? But it, the one martial art that is the most effective in self-defense, I've trained in, I've trained in it for three years, okay, for three years. My, my students don't even know I've trained in it. I've never taught anybody it. I mean, if I have a student and they're very advanced, I might teach them some of the things in it. But it is some of the things from it. But it is the best martial art for self-defense. The best, and they didn't even mention it. I'm going to tell you the martial arts that they did mention, and then I'm going to tell you the 10 things you need to know in order to understand, in order to draw your conclusion as to what the best martial art is for self-defense, okay? Some of the martial, the first martial art they mentioned was Aikido. Aikido. Now, one of the guys trained in Aikido. The other guy knows better. He, he knows better. 
And again, they're from that particular group that I talk about. That particular group of whites, one Asian that they throw in, you know, to make it look like, you know, it's not about race. But that group of whites who have manipulated um, the, 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 uh, the so-called authority and so-called influence that they wield over the martial arts community, which, is, which has their influence, um, which has uh, their major influence being the suburban, middle class, under 30, white male in America, right? Which means basically martial arts, the martial arts community is screwed. It's screwed. Because when that particular group, I'm not saying you don't have any tough middle class white folks. What I am saying is, is that when that's the group you're catering to, martial arts is screwed. Okay? Now, I just want to say that. And, and I need to say this too. One of the toughest people I know happens to be a Harvard graduate attorney. Right? White guy. Right? One of the toughest guys I know. I am not speaking, I'm speaking in a general sense. In a general sense. If you were catering to the white, middle class, under 30, American male, you cannot be sincere about what you're doing. You cannot be sincere. Because that is a group that is gullible. That is a group that has no interest in doing much of anything that is real when it comes down to the martial arts. This person picks these Two people pick Aikido as the number one. Now, there is no, there is no, now you might say, oh, that makes sense. It doesn't make sense at all. Any martial art where the onus is on constant evasion, a constant evasion, and then throwing someone by their wrist is not logical, it's not viable, it's not real, it's not authentic. There's not one combative teacher that sees not one respected combative teacher that says Aikido should be your base. In fact, virtually every combative teacher, virtually every combative teacher has three disciplines, one of three or all three of these disciplines as their base. They build on it, but as their base. And I'll tell you before I finish this video. The second martial art that they said, right, was most effective in the street was Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Typical. Typical. Not one, not one major, famous, combative instructor from 90s on down, not one, okay, says that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu should be your base. Not one, not one. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu being a viable, all-encompassing martial art for the street is BS. The American white middle class, 30 and under. When you look at the multi-dimensions that, that, that people in karate do when they're, when they're training, right? Whether you like karate or not, you can clearly see that it was made to fight more than one person. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu no such thing. You can see that it's not made for that. So even if somebody makes 10 videos doing that, they're trying to do it because they recognize the flaw in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Next. There was one very famous combative teacher who said this, and I agree. He said, if you go to the ground, if you find yourself on the ground, rather, if you find yourself on the ground, it's because you made a mistake. I repeat, one of the most noted, and particularly Jeff Thompson. Jeff Thompson, I'll just put up here, Jeff Thompson, the granddaddy of combatives. The granddaddy, the godfather of combatives. There's no one who would say that authentic, real street fighting was, uh, 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 can be talked about without including Jeff Thompson. Jeff Thompson said, if you find yourself on the ground for whatever reason, you've made a mistake. Whether you've been knocked down or whether you go to the ground voluntarily, you've made a mistake. Because you can get your brains stomped in. People get jumped. If you're beating a friend from the ground, somebody can walk up. It's ridiculous. So anyone who says Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is number two martial art for self-defense is a shyster. They are a shyster, they're unethical, and they are a hustler. And you can tell them Safe Carmen said so. I want you to. I want you to look at any person that I've said it, said that this applies to and tell them that I said it. They're going to dismiss me because you people have made them rich. They're going to dismiss me. You say, oh, it doesn't matter because you people made them rich. That's why. But I will say it to their face. Anybody I talk about, I will say it to their face. They're unethical. And they're getting together only to monopolize the money that they can generate from gullible, uh, uh, gullible, gullible 
adolescent, white, middle class, under 30 white males. They have Krav Maga, maybe nine. So who do they have, what ones do they have on top? Aikido and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right then, shows they have no credibility. No matter what kind of sparring you see them doing, no matter what jumping around you see them doing, no matter what kind of mixed martial arts or self-defense event they are, when they're going up against each other and trying to prove how tough they are, here are 10 things that a martial art needs to have to be good for the streets. Blows have to be delivered with power and speed. The blows have to be delivered with power and speed. They must also be concussive. They must be delivered in such a way that it causes blunt force trauma. To do that, you need speed and you need power. This is my personal list. I came up with it based on my personal experience. Number two, it needs to use maximum parts of the body. Okay, it needs to utilize maximum parts of the body. The forearm in every direction, hammer fists in every direction, head butts, elbows in every direction. Okay, that way. Okay, the knees in every direction. Okay, biting, spitting, fingers, breaking, not joint locks, joint breaking. They need to be able to use every part of their body and they need to train in using every part of their body. Easily adaptable to mul multiple assailants. Your positioning is your delivery system. So if you're boxing, your delivery system might be like this. If you're wrestling, your delivery system might be something like this. You can't see my legs, but my legs will be, of course, in a certain position also for easy movement, right? Retreating, uh, circling, sidestepping, uh, advancing, etc. But it must be easily adaptable to a situation where you're fighting more than one person. In any viable martial art for self-defense, going to the ground has to be seen as an absolute last resort. Not like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, where, okay, this is my first option. Then when I'm on the ground, going to the guard. This is the most ridiculous BS I've ever seen, I've ever heard, ever heard in my life. Ever heard in my life. And no respected, I keep saying this, no respected combative teacher thinks that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu should be your base or going to the ground should be your first priority. And when necessary, and when necessary, the top position or a top position should be preferred. Now let me say this again. Number four, going to the ground should be the last resort in any viable martial art for the street. And if necessary, it should be emphasized that the preferred position is a position from the top. Takedowns are gross motor, not complicated. They are ballistic and they induce pain. Okay? And they induce pain. Takedowns are gross motor, not complicated, ballistic, and painful. Now, what does this mean? Gross motor. These are not things that are very difficult to pull off. So if I want to take you down, I can take my arm, bring it across your torso or across your neck, take one of my feet, put it in back of one of, and put it in back of one of your legs or both of your legs, and the, just the sheer motion of me moving, you will go down. Okay? The sheer motion of me moving, you will go down. Or I might grab you by your jersey, pull you forward with a, with a, with a, with a sharp tug, put one leg out in front of your legs, and you go over my leg, this is gross motor. Something that is not very difficult. They must be gross motor, very easy, which means that takedowns should be only a few, okay? They should not be complicated, they should be ballistic. So what does that mean? Rather than just going for an underhook, right? Or over and under, or something like that, right? Arm and collar, grab someone by the neck, snatch them down. Get behind him, grab him by the chin, underneath the chin, put your fingers up underneath the chin, and snatch him down. They should be ballistic. They should be ballistic and they should be violent. Simple and violent. Joint manipulation should not be just to submit somebody. I'm going to submit them. I'm going to submit them. No. 
Joint manipulation should be to break that joint, right, or to render them useless. In other words, you break the leg or you, 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 you wrench the leg in such a way where they have no mobility, right? But joint manipulations in any viable martial art for the street, okay, should render that joint useless or break it. Kicks are low-lined. There's a guy who said he's in martial arts. He comes to my channel. He said, oh, well, somebody kicked somebody in the head. I'm not even going to mention the names, right? Oh, you know, somebody from this group kicked somebody in the head. Like, that's a big deal. Sparring, sparring, kicked somebody in the head. There's not, again, not one combative teacher respected. Not one combative teacher really respected. Like, again, Jeff Morrison. Thinks that you should be kicking to the head. That you should be lifting your leg up in the air and, ha and, 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 and sacrifice your balance. Sacrifice your stability. And, and ultimately sacrifice your health by kicking to someone's head. Right? Kicks should be low-lined and should be designed to take away mobility. Okay? They should be low-lined, below the waist, preferably, and designed to take away mobility. Okay? To break the shin cap, uh, the, uh, the kneecap. To um, um, to harm the legs in some way, where that individual does not it, uh, their their um, their uh, ability to fight uh, is compromised. Their abil ability to move is compromised. Okay, affecting their mobility. That's why kicks should be low line in any viable martial art for the street. Within that training. There should be the assumption that a person will have a weapon. So their hand positioning should be something that would work if someone had a weapon. Okay, Their feet should be, or their, their, their body positioning should be uh, 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 easily moved or be easily adapted uh, to a situation where someone has a weapon. So a core assumption for any real martial art for the street is that someone can have a weapon. Any viable martial art for self-defense should have basic use of practical weaponry. Should have basic use of practical we weaponry. Not do training in a martial art and then you go out and you learn the knife. No, part of that martial art should be training in the blade. Part of that martial art should be training in the blade and preferably improvised weapons. For example, this just happens to be here. Okay? Use this way. Use this way. Just you don't need, need you don't even need anything fancy, okay? You don't even need anything fancy. You come over. Somebody tries to grabs your wrist, snatch your wrist off, pull it out, and continue stabbing in, right? That's just I don't want you to go out and do that. This isn't my dear. This is improvised weapons. This alongside alongside someone's head, right? Improvised weapons. This. Improvised weapons in the eyes gives you plenty of time to do what you need to do. Okay, even something like this, just in the face, improvised weapons. Okay, that's it. Something like this, holding your hand, bash them in the face with it. Just take it, right? Plastic, plastic. You know, it may not hurt them, but they'll blink. They'll blink. They will give you a recoil that is long enough and that is substantial enough for you to get up out of your seat if you need to get up out of your seat or to sidestep them, move out to the right or move out to the left, okay? But basic use of practical weaponry is a necessity for any real street viable martial art. As much as possible, that martial art should be trained live. It should be trained live with some kind of contact, some kind of, uh, and people not resisting, okay? So here we go. Number one, blows have to be delivered with both power and speed. They need to be concussive. Two, maximum parts of the body have to be used. Number three, must be easily adaptable to multiple assailants. Number four, going to the ground has to be viewed as the last resort and when it is necessary, the top position if it's preferred. Number five, takedowns must be gross motor, easy to pull off, not complicated, and ballistic. Number six, joint manipulations are to break and render or render useless. Number seven, kicks are to be low line and designed to take away mobility. Number eight, there should be a core general assumption that a, 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 an assailant has a weapon. Number nine, there should be basic use of practical weaponry, should be the blade and improvised uh, weapons. And number 10, it should be trained live against people, uh, with people who are resisting, okay? 
If your martial art does not have those 10 factors, then it is not viable for the street, no matter what anyone says. My name is Safe Carmen. I'm a fight camp. See you next video.